are listening to the Bulldog Educator Podcast by host Kirsten Wilson, production work done by David Galvez, and music curated and created by David Galvez. This is being recorded on Anchor FM. Hi, listeners. I wanted to share with you something that is going on, and this is really pertinent right now. I am doing this advertisement as part of a charitable initiative in partnership with Ballot Ready, and I'm not getting any um, money with this. This is an unpaid opportunity, but I really wanted to share with you. The goal of this initiative is to increase voter education and encourage you guys to get the vote out during the 2020 general election this November. Ballot Ready is a nonpartisan voter guide to every race and referendum. Most voters, you guys, will enter the booth knowing who you want to vote for president or governor or senator, but you're not prepared for everything else. But every position on the ballot matters. Judges, school boards, water commissioners, and city councils make the decisions that affect our everyday lives. A voter who goes to BallotReady.org can enter their address to see their entire ballot, and from there they can compare candidates based on stances, on issues, biography, or endorsements. Once they've made a decision, they can save their choices and use that when you go to the polls to vote. Voters can also use a requ- um, also request a ballot to vote by mail and find their polling place and make a plan to vote. I hope that you'll take advantage of this. I know I'm going to because this and every opportunity to vote is the way that we continue to make sure that our voices are heard and that we are well represented. Welcome to the Bulldog Educator podcast with your host, Kirsten Wilson. If you're joining for the first time, welcome. This is our first, very first episode of season one. If you listen to the intro episode or our bonus episode, thank you for returning and listening to this episode. In this episode, we're going to talk about the core values of the Bulldog Educator. And this is just kind of where our heart is, and we wanted our listeners to know as we move forward. Because one of the things that we really thrive on is transparency and vulnerability. So the f- we're going to do kind of a top 10 list. If you uh, are of uh, my generation, it's kind of like a David Letterman top 10 list. And we're going to work our way down um, to our very first or number one uh, value. Our first value that we have is to core value is to value people first. People, educators, always are talking about relationships. However, sometimes the completion of a goal or a task becomes more important than the person, and we make a huge withdrawal on their emotional bank account. And what I want to do is just help educators really figure out ways that we can continue to value people first. In my previous district, there was a huge emphasis on um, on performance, and it made me very task-oriented, and I kind of fell into the trap of... um, projects first, and it costs me some relationships and and an impact on others. Um, And one of the things that when I transitioned into my current position, um, I vowed to make a change. And as a result of me focusing more on valuing people first, I've become more fulfilled and my teachers are trusting me and are true friends of mine. And so I want to use this platform, this opportunity to help others make that transition from projects to people. Number nine, pour into the strengths of others. This is something that I have learned as an administrator working with people that don't do alone what you can do with others. If others do it better, let them have it. For goodness sake, um, one of the greatest ways to empower others is to, to pour into um, to them and let them do um, what maybe you don't do as well. And so um, give take that opportunity to give it over. Life is definitely so much better when you can share the load and let others shine. And nothing is more fulfilling to me than to see others in their lane of strength impacting others. I... Um, I don't think there's anything that makes me more happy than the accomplishment or the success of another person when they have um, discovered um, how powerful they are when they're working within their strength and their passion and how they impact others. Number eight, commit to your passions. Uh, Do you follow someone who's without conviction? It's really important um, 
in this career and when you're working with students and other educators that you know yourself. Know what you stand for and learn to invite, learn how to invite others into your space and passions. And also in this knowing thyself and committing to your passions, be open and willing to embrace the passions of others and have that space for listening and encouraging them as well. Number seven, humor. Have a Cosmo-like attitude. Now, you guys know that the bulldog educator, the mascot, is my French bulldog, Cosmo. And one of the things that he's brought into my life is that humor. Um, He has the ability to make others laugh. And I want to say that as the bulldog educator, we must find ways that we can make others laugh. And of course, laugh at yourself and pursue what you love with abandon. Just like my dog, Cosmo, he pursues his ball with abandon. And on t- and in addition to that, he pursues his um, uh, connection and relationship with his who man, which is me, um, with just an abandon. Whenever I go for walks, he's not the greatest um, on, a, on a leash, so he doesn't walk with me when I go for my, my power walks. But while he's in the house waiting for me, he goes from window to window to window, watching me as I walk along the road, um, just wanting to be with me again. And he does that with abandon. So um, just, you know, have that humor and that Cosmo like attitude to pursue others and encourage them in their humor. Remember your voice is your source of humor. Don't try to use somebody else's humor. Um, Cosmo has his own voice. He's a chortler. He doesn't bark, but he chortles and he always greets those in the house with his chortles. He sticks close to his human and is always up for a game of fetch. So the other thing is that he has the funniest facial expressions. And so one of the things that I've also learned with Cosmo and his humor and having his attitude is your face expression can turn determine your day. So a, sm- a Cosmo smile goes a long way, just like your smile goes a long way. Number six, be a joy seeker. One of the things that the beginning of this year um, and that we've done the last couple of years is my family has a word of the year. I personally have a word of the year, but my family also has a word of the year too. And this year's word of the year was joy. We wanted to find joy in what we do. Finding the joy must be an intentional pursuit. It j- joy just doesn't find you. Um, and there could always be a reason to s- walk away from the joy. Every day, find a reason to have gratitude. Um, take opportunities to extend random acts of kindness and look for those opportunities to bless other people. There are going to be challenges. What are your go-tos when you have those challenges to turn it around? And who are those friends that stand with you and help you find your way back to your joy and remind you of the joy that you have in your life? Number five, self-care to ensure the care of others. Um, I'm going to be talking in my next podcast about people who influence me, and Tina Bugarin is one of those, and she talks a lot about educator self-care. Um, but in her book um, that she's recently put out, she talks about um, how when we get on a plane, the first thing they say is if you know the plane becomes in distress, that before you place an oxygen mask on a child, if you're traveling with a child, you need to place your mox- oxygen mask on you first. And if you don't, um, it could be uh, very bad for both you and the child. Um, you have to take care of yourself in order to be able to take care of others. And that's something at the Bulldog Educator that w- I myself, I'm working on, and I'm hoping through future podcasts, we can talk about ways we can take care of ourselves. This was really actually hard for me to learn. And I have along the way, as I've worked with several educators over the past 21 years, noticed it's very hard for others as well. Um, and this this learning of this process of self-care means um, I'm learning to uh, take daily walks, um, plan, doing some meal planning so that um, myself and my family eats healthier. I'm carving out and scheduling time to do reading, not just for my 
my job and for my personal, my professional development, but also reading for enjoyment um, and reading to just calm my spirit. Um, and like I said, I was making meals, um, that are more healthy for me and my family. I'm also, um, making healthier choices for the snacks that I eat and then being purposeful and learning how to connect more deeply with my friends and family. Number four, clear communication is essential to build trust and transparency and vulnerability, vulnerability. One of the things I have learned is that your communication must be clear. If you don't communicate clearly or you leave information out, people will make up the story in between um, the story that they tell themselves or possibly the story that they say about you. Um, And so it's really important that you um, communicate clearly Um, and super essential. As Brene Brown says, clear is kind, unclear is unkind. Poor communication can create space for damage, and distrust, and harm. And if we care for students, we must provide an environment for educators to be cared for through our communication. And so that is really important. Moving to the next part that really ties well into communication, but is also essential for it to stand on its own. And it's one of the things that the Bulldog Educator podcast really, really strongly believes in is number three, teamwork, push for excellence. One of the reasons that this is one of my core values as the Bulldog Educator podcast host is because over the years, I have become a better educator because of others. I can do okay on my own, but with others' ideas, input, feedback, critical conversations, changes, it has changed the outcome both for myself as a person and it is better for my learners. In my case, for my teachers in my present position, um, it helps me to create professional learning and provide challenges that um, continue to help my teachers to grow, and then as a result, benefit my students, um, or our students rather, with um, in my organization. When we have teamwork uh, in my organization, it's where our collaborative teams meet, and in that space, we build that teacher efficacy that John Hattie has talked about is the greatest yield in impacting learner growth in, in regards to effect size. This has also become one of the single biggest factors in transformation for me as an educator. Um, And it's where I choose to meet my fellow educators in the team, or excuse me, in the space of a team or family. And when you have that, you also build that sense of belonging, which is so essential in the work that we do. Number two, always desire growth and learning in others. One of the things that um, I have never, ever thought as an educator is that I couldn't get a student to learn or grow. And I've uh, mostly taught in the um, upper elementary, fourth, fifth um, grades and middle school or junior high, sixth, seventh and eighth grades. And for some reason, when kids get to those grade levels, there are sometimes um, there's a mindset that there's no more that can be done, that this is just where they are. And I've never had that fixed mindset. Um, But one of the situations I had, and this was very early in my teaching career, I had a student named, and we're just going to call her um, Erica. But Erica um, came to me, and she had trouble basically organizing or higher executive functions for getting things organized. And um, we later found out that it was a learning disability. She was a very smart young lady, but she needed a way or a strategy to capture multi-step actions, um, completing tasks, and that side of things. And it was um, working with her and figuring this out in the classroom um, that I discovered, 
a way to help her. And with the permission of her mom, because I worked in a really small town, I decided that I was going to step out of the classroom and not make it academic because that seemed to be hindering some of our progress and make it about a daily activity. And so what we did is we made it um, about basically completing the task of doing several chores in the house. And she made a list and then she broke it down into steps and we talked through it and she wrote that all down. And then I had her basically break up the list into small sections and she pulled each section out as she did it and checked them off. And what she learned is in that she was successful. So then I asked her, how do you apply that into um, school? And she said, well, when we get ready for a task, we need to make a list. And I said, how can I help you? And she said, if you can write on the board what needs to be done and the steps in the process to complete it, she says, then I can write it on my um, paper and then check it off as I go. That strategy was so successful for her. She continued to do that all the way through school. And she went to nursing school and is um, a very successful nurse and is actually a nurse practitioner and teaches college level nursing classes while still actively practicing um, as a nurse. And so it was such um, an important thing that I was desiring growth in her and learning in her, and she was able to, through my help, take a strategy that was useful to her. It's important that we treat everyone with individual expectations of how they are going to get from their point A to their point B. If you've ever listened to George Koros, he talks about it's not about everybody getting from my point A to my point B, but finding out what each individual's point A is and how they get to their point B. Another thing about that desire to see growth and learning in others is um, some qualities and characteristics that we must exude. And those are patience and grace, understanding, and having clearly communicated high expectations. So important that we have those clearly communicated high expectations that are um, fostered or surrounded by that patience, grace, and understanding. And the final core value of the Bulldog Educator is to do right by kids. One of the things that's really important um, in doing right by kids is to take care. And that means take care of yourself, of your colleagues, your fellow teachers, and of your students. And some of the questions we need to ask ourselves, are we doing what is best for our students or what works for us. Um, Sometimes when we um, do something, we may be doing it because it makes our job easier instead of what necessarily is that better for our learners. Um, Another question to ask ourselves as we do right by kids are, are we honoring student voice and choice? Um, One of the things I discovered as I taught the higher grades is that sometimes students didn't even know their own voice anymore because they had become so compliant to the requests and the demands of what education was being given to them. And it was through Genius Hour that I discovered this um, as they were deciding or determining their passion projects. And um, I really had to work hard to discover ways to help students Find their own voice again. The other thing we need to ask ourselves is, is the learning having long-term life benefit or is it a test score benefit? So we have to determine what are we teaching? Is it having that lifelong learning benefit or is it more short-term focused on test scores? Now, I realize that test scores are important to an extent, but relevancy and rigor can happen with a lifelong learning benefit rather than just a test score. The other thing by doing right by kids, and um, I think that if you've been in education long enough, you know that at some point you've probably jumped to a conclusion on a kid or not given them the benefit of the doubt. And I think we've all been in that space um, 
before. And I just want to say, give yourself that grace um, because we're human. But one of the really important things, if we're doing right by kids, when we see a behavior that um, is um, just doesn't seem right or maybe seems out of character, I really do think that kids come to school in the morning with the intention of wanting to learn and wanting to be part of that connection and that community. So when something happens that severs them from that connection or community, it's really important to get the story of what's going on behind the scenes. Give them the benefit of the doubt, that pause the presupposition and don't jump to conclusions. And some other things that we might want to think about if we're doing right by kids are what are we asking of our teachers and our students that could be possibly adding stress to the learning environment? Um, Is this ask that we have as administrators of teachers Is this something that's adding stress to them that then carries over to their students in the learning environment? Or what is is teachers are teachers asking of students that possibly can be stressing them out? Um, Are you aware of what else might be going on with these kids if the kiddo has a lot of extracurricular activities? Or maybe this kiddo is the oldest of seven kids, and when they get home, they're responsible for cleaning the house, fixing dinner, making, doing the laundry, and then you assign three hours of homework for your AP class. Is that being, is that stressing that kid out unnecessarily? And can that kid show you the work in a way that doesn't add that additional stress um, and and yet pr- be respectful of that time that they need to support their family. And another thing, and especially as we're going into this next year, uh, are we considering the social emotional needs of our students and the trauma that has um, occurred through COVID-19 and maybe even before that, the trauma that may have impacted them some way um, through their home environment, and then uh, the trauma of the recent um, Black Lives Matter movement um, just really welling up um, some social injustices, and these kids are at a point, a breaking point, are we considering those things? And so as I um, read through these top 10, I just wanted to share these with you so uh, that you would know where the Bulldog Educator podcast stands. And so I want to do a quick recap of what our core beliefs are. Number 10, value people first. Number nine, pour into the strengths of others. Number eight, Commit to your passions. Number seven, humor. Have a Cosmo-like attitude. Number six, be a joy seeker. Number five, self-care to ensure the care of others. Number four, clear communication is essential. Number three, teamwork. Push for excellence. Number two, always desire growth and learning in others. Number one, do right by kids. In my next podcast, I'll be sharing some of my influencers, which include authors, social media um, influencers, um, some of a little bit about how my faith um, plays into that, podcasters, and just people in general. Um, just uh, if you're interested in more information, you can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and my blog, thebulldogeducator.org. And um, you can find me at Twitter or Facebook and Instagram at the Bulldog EDU. I'd love to see you there. Please give me a follow. And I look forward to you in our next uh, episode in about a week. Thank you so much. Oh,